both sides face. That's Avalon Centrifuge to you! <laughs> hey, kiddo! Welcome to the triumphant manifestation of my transcendence. When it was released more than two years ago, Media Molecule turned more than a few heads with Little Big Planet. Since then, the adorable Sackboy has served as an unofficial mascot for the PlayStation 3 and what is arguably one of the most artistic, addicting, and clever platformers to date. The Little Big Planet community, given the opportunity at some basic gameplay development, has constructed more than 3 million wacky user created levels, an unprecedented feat on a console. A sequel, it seemed at the time, was unnecessary as gamers had a nearly endless supply of new levels, stickers, outfits, and other goodies to keep them busy. When it was revealed that Media Molecule was releasing Little Big Planet 2, it was obvious the developer had more it wanted to show off, and after spending time with the game, it's clear the sequel was handled quite well. Everything about Little Big Planet 2 is an improvement upon the original. From slightly enhanced gameplay physics to a near overhaul of the level creation system, Little Big Planet 2 will extend the franchise indefinitely and provide at least two more years of dazzling entertainment. There are few games that offer as much variety as Little Big Planet 2. It's a platformer at its core, but its heart is an empty canvas, waiting for brilliant designers to build their masterpieces. There is more variety in the gameplay than in the original. On one level you'll pilot a bumblebee through a side-scrolling shooter, and the next level you'll be playing hoops against user opponents. It's this retooled level creation system that has given new life to the game. Building levels is still slow and time-consuming, but you are no longer restricted to the basic platformer style. You can create just about anything you set your imagination on. After all, that is the game's original intention. Those new to the world of Little Big Planet, and even those returning from the original game, will want to start with the story mode. You are given more than 30 new levels to play through, all of which are varied and showcase what you can do on your own in the create mode. The actual story is virtually non-existent, as it should be, and it involves the evil Negativitron invading Craft World for some reason. You play as a sack boy or sack girl and are tasked with destroying the beast. You'll come across a quirky cast of characters that aid you in your quest. These characters provide tutorials for the new devices and gameplay features. But more than anything, the story is intended to show players what they can build for themselves. The game looks extremely unique and sounds as fresh as an iTunes commercial. The soundtrack is simply wonderful, while the art style is moody, with the flair for vaudeville. Each world has its own unique look and is completely different than the last world you completed. Up to this point, you are probably thinking this seems like more of the same from the original game. But the real entertainment comes in the form of the variety of challenge levels. You can play against real-life in-game opponents in racing games, pool, basketball, even shooters. The further you progress in the story mode, the cooler the levels get. As not to spoil the ending, the last set of levels offer some truly challenging, yet appropriately quirky space battles and a throwback to vintage gaming. All of these interesting and new levels will likely encourage you to check out the create mode. Clearly there are some people who played Little Big Planet and became obsessed with the create mode, as will likely be the case in the sequel. I am not ashamed to admit that I do not fit in this category. While the idea of creating levels in Little Big Planet is genius, it's just too time consuming for my liking. Again, that is just my personal preference, and it's clear that while many of the 3.5 million levels are terrific, a large number of them were simply built to provide trophies or new stickers. Your creation process is guided through new tutorials, which are neatly bundled together. Stephen Fry returns to provide narration, and while the tutorials offer a decent look at the basic and advanced level creation features, they are not overly thorough. There are quite a few additions to the game's core that require tutorials, so we are glad to sit through the interactive video demonstrations of things like sackbots, microchips, and sequencers. Searching for levels is easier than ever. The old star rating system is replaced with a simple smiley or sad face. You'll find the tagging system easy to use, and the filter search engine makes it simple to limit the junk and find that golden gem. 
All of the old levels are available, along with all of your collectibles. So once you complete the 30 story levels and the 10 or so challenge levels, you'll have more than 3 million user generated levels to play through. It shouldn't take too long before we see another few million levels added to the network. Little Big Planet 2 is a game that keeps on giving. It's endless. You will not find a game on the market that has more playability, more likability, and more, oh well, just cuteness than Little Big Planet 2. Some may just want to play through the vast library of levels, but for those who dream of creating the next great game, the enormously deep create mode gives aspiring designers a vessel to display their masterpieces. It will still take many hours to complete that perfect level, but for some, that's half the fun. Once you have finished your dream level, you can simply share it with the growing community of Sackboy followers. After all, Media Molecule was the first to establish the play, create, share model for the PlayStation, and the sequel has taken those original ideas to brand new dimensions.